So this is the rudder system on the Hobie kayak and it has this little line right here. You pull one of these, it flips it up. You pull the other one, it pulls it down. So this rotates like this and flips into the water. Um, <clears throat> the Torquedo actually mounts, you can get one that mounts to the bottom. I think you need like a brace kit for it. What I'm gonna do is pop this guy off here. And my thoughts are we put a plate behind this because this is almost flat. We'll carry that line. We can distribute our pressure from the motors across this point and not put everything through these plastic components. Special thanks to everybody who's helped out with this project through the GoFundMe. If you're not aware, this is the fourth video in a series and we're really trying to engineer a system that is a nice DIY system that pretty much anybody can install in their kayak and that costs a ton of money. So for those of you that are out there trying to figure out how to put a motor on your kayak and what the best solution is, this GoFundMe is great because it helps you guys out too. So I'd just like to say thank you. I'm still buying stuff and I haven't spent a penny of the money yet and I'll let you guys know what I decide. I have a plan up my sleeve. What I'm leaning towards with the money is having our own ESC produced that can actually handle the amount of power we require for this system. So that's what I'm looking into now. All right, enough of that. Enjoy the video. That's mounted on there real nice. We may clean up the top right here, kind of round that out. I'll scribe it, and then we'll make this look nice. Everything else looks nice. We've got a good gap there, a good fit, and I'm going to put a little bit of foam behind this just to cushion any vibration. And um, it can pull this way, right? And you can see a little bit of flex there, but once it pushes, it's locked in place because it's pushing against this. That's, I really like that. I like using the kayak to do the work. That means we don't have to put any holes through it. And so when we're, and also when we're pushing on this part right here, we are not pulling on this part up here because it's not cantilevering uh, at, a, at a tipping point like a seesaw, right? So it's not putting leverage on this. So this is really good. Really, this is just being held in place with these two bolts and it's located, but all the force is going to be pushing directly forward. So we're going to punch a hole through here and we're going to install the rest of the stuff now. Okay, so that didn't turn out too bad. 
Now, when I go to like make these available, what I can do is just make it all one piece and plasma cut it. And then we'll take this to the press and put that little bend in it. But um, I'm going to go ahead and install the motors real quick and we're going to hang it. Well, it's really started cooling down outside, so it's time to get prepared for winter. I'm going to clean this guy out, and then we're going to go ahead and switch our modes here to dry. And we'll turn her on dry. It's been about a year since I installed the Mr. Cool unit, and the um, front end's a little dusty. And I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to give her a quick wipe down. I'm not even using, like, water or anything like that. I mean, just a, it's just a little dusty. So we're going to clean her up. I haven't cleaned this in like a month or so, so uh, you're going to see what I see. So all you do is you just pull the filters down, take them out like that, and we'll go over them, and then I'll get you some close-up shots of like what would make it through to the base of the unit. There's a little slot right here where they slide in. It can be a little fiddly to make sure that you're lined up, but that's it right there. Pretty simple. Okay, she's all clean. She's ready to go for another, I don't know, two months. One of the best features of the Mr. Cool unit is that it removes all the humidity from my shop, and I have a lot of raw metal here. There's a lot of machining tools in here. My table is made out of solid steel, and um, it removes the humidity from this environment. That is a huge positive, so we don't deal with surface rust on clean metal. I've never had a way to show you guys how much this actually drops down the humidity and the temperature change between inside and outside. So today I'm going to install just a really simple little widget that helps me do that. So uh, Smartro sent this out to me, and this is a cool little little weather station um, they're only like 20 bucks I'll put a link in the description where you guys can get one I've had it for a couple weeks and I really like it um, it's 85 outside it's 71 inside and it also allows me to see the differential in humidity right now and um, it just rained last night outside it's sunny where the unit is so it's dry like it's in direct sunlight so it's showing 35 outside this in here we're at 42 percent humidity that's actually pretty high so by kicking it over to dry we're gonna drop that down we're gonna pull all the humidity out the air and this number will be lower than that number very very shortly I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for the mr. cool winter giveaway um, we're giving away an awesome unit that's gonna be coming in my next video so that's a air conditioner install and yeah so I'm excited as always there's links in the description if you guys want to get a hold of one of these mr. cool units they're fantastic I highly suggest you pick one up it makes your life so much better when you're working out in the shop oh <laughs> Twin screws, baby. Uh, they need to be adjusted a little bit, but that looks pretty cool, right? <laughs> oh my God, it's going to be so awesome. Okay, the reason I went this direction with this is I didn't want, this is my wife's kayak. I didn't want to drill a single hole in here, and we don't have a single hole, right? This is awesome. I actually could have put these way closer together, too. You can see they clear the props, but I think it's more efficient this way. Anyway, no holes drilled. Uh, this can be put back to normal. Her steering is exactly how it is when she's in the kayak. She's, you know, guys, your women doesn't like you to go in there and change their stuff, especially if she likes it, right? And so I have to respect her wishes. She loves this kayak, and all I got to do to take this off is pop one screw out. Now, I can actually make it to where we can pull a pin and remove this whole thing eventually. So my wife loves to pedal this thing. Putting only one of these motors through that drive is really not going to net us much of anything anyway. And I don't want her fooling around with like trying to catch a prop and twisting it the right way when she pulls it out. I don't like that. But that is removable. It's low enough to where if she hits the front of her boat going through some water, she'll know she's about to kill her props. We never go in water this low. Um, it's not really a big deal. Then also, like I said, if you know you're going to be going in a low river and you want these out of the water, just loosen this and rotate them up and they'll be clear of the water. So what do you think, guys? How many torques? How many torques does she have? Okay, now I'm just charging batteries. I got to get Amy a new seat. I just bolted this strap on there real quick. Kind of cheesy, but anyway, um, I, I fixed everything back up. Everything's mounted on the kayak the way it should be. Uh, from back here, you really can't see any wires, right? 
you can see those because they're yellow um, but once again just the prototype I've got an idea of how I can make these quickly and easily out of one piece it's gonna be awesome that means uh, Hobie Outback really really cheap motor mounts well, cheap motor mounts regardless and you still get to use all your OEM stuff man you don't have to modify any of it and you guys spend a lot of money on your kayaks if it were me I wouldn't want to be hacking my kayak up I certainly haven't done any of that on my kayak and so I like the idea of like leaving the bolt hole if I can and um, having that much meat on the back to push off of I thought that was pretty good now if we were gonna put like two big motors on here we might um, do something where we come across with a support up to here or something you know some kind of arm I haven't even thought it over but we could add more support very easily I guess would be the way to say that uh jury's still out on these guys man the programming just leaves so much to be desired it's um it's kind of frustrating to be honest with you but I'm excited we're done uh, s almost the entire day just programming this thing learning how to program it next time you see us we'll be out in the lake well, I really wanted to test this out on this video, but unfortunately that's not going to happen. Um, just a simple touch on the ground. I tried to get this out of the truck and um, I, I, holding it from the middle, it tilted down. Stupid mistake. Immediately just shattered the props, like barely even touched them and they broke. So we have to come up with a prop solution for this guy that's um, going to work. And I'll show you kind of what we're going to do for that. So this prop just came in the mail from YouTuber Craig Campbell, MC Engineering. Get over and check them out. I'll put a link in the description. And um, so, yeah, this was just the first attempt at a prop. Oh, my God, it's beautiful. This guy is so skilled. So you're going to be wanting to watch his channel as we go through the prototyping process to figure out what the best pitch um, is going to be for our props and the best size and designs. So, yeah, that's a pretty good solution, don't you think? I'm so grateful to know people that are let's just say smarter than me that have more knowledge than me I really really appreciate it so thanks Craig and um, we'll get this tested as soon as possible I really like the part that we built and I think we can make these available to you because it's so simple that this is something I think we could probably manufacture cheaply and they wouldn't cost much for the mounts so guys I went ahead and ordered a 3d printer and the reason that is is I need to be able to prototype um, propellers for pitch and we can do some tests on them. I don't expect them to last very long. There are some great filaments out there that I think are plenty strong enough to do what we need to do as far as propellers go. But I've got something else up my sleeve for that. So this is the Ender 5 Pro and um, we're gonna assemble this. I'm not really gonna talk a lot about it. My other idea is that um, when I wanna mount like a control panel, I can go ahead and use the 3D printer to uh, make files so that you guys can just download them. Or if you want me to print it for you, uh, it, you know, it'd, it'd be whatever it costs to print it, you know, plus a few bucks for time. Um, that way we can keep it cheap. And if this ends up working out pretty well, uh, maybe we can set up like a farm and get a couple more of these and get them running and get the price of the parts down. So, um, but yeah, prototyping, that's what this is for. So this guy right here was $394. So far we have about $900 donated. I know that we needed a 3D printer, but 
but I didn't want to spend your money on a 3D printer, so I spent my money on a 3D printer. And the reason I did that is because I want your money to go to testing components, right? To buying the stuff that we want to know um, is the best. And I think that that's what the money's for. So I know I needed this for the project, for testing propellers and just, just different pitches, for building small brackets, and possibly even like for the Hobie guys. I think um, with the carbon fiber reinforced stuff, maybe nylon, well, not nylon because it's hydroscopic, but... Um, Using some of the higher end plastics, I think I can print a mount that's strong enough to handle the two motor system that you see in today's build, and that would be dirt cheap for me to be able to like send these out to you. So I went ahead and purchased this myself, and once again, I'm using your money only for components that we really, really, truly need for the build. This is not a component, this is a tool.